Hey everybody and welcome to the Indie Spotlight Network. My name is Ron Cooper and I'm going to be the host. And we're backstage and we're going to be filming here on what's going on on the Indie Spotlight Network. Now the purpose of this show is really simple. There's a lot that goes on outside of Hollywood that you may not know about. There's a lot of actors, filmmakers, directors, agents that may be standing right next to you in a, in a grocery store and you may not even know it. The purpose of what we want to do is to spotlight these individuals. We want to show you what happens outside of Hollywood. We want to show you that there's a lot of films that are being made that you may have never heard of, but yet there's so much that's going on. I'm talking these are command performances that, if I could use the term, they're Oscar available, they're ready. Okay, But what we're going to be doing is we're going to introduce you to actors, to filmmakers, to casting agents, talent agents, so that you can see what goes on. We're going to talk about the business end of it. And we're also going to show you actor reels. That's where you get a chance to see the work that an actor's done put all in about a two to five minute little reel. Also on this show, we're going to show you some short films. You'll actually get to see very short films that are very good. And of course, if you go to our, our website, you'll be able to see other things as well. But right now, I am so glad to introduce our very first two guests to you. These two people, and for me personally, in my acting career, have been awesome, and they are a great part of it. And it is a true honor that they're here today. First, I want to introduce you to Miss Anna Nalepka and Mr. Lee Armstrong. For, hey guys, thank you very much for coming on. I, I greatly appreciate this. And wanted to have the opportunity for everybody to get a chance to know what you do a little bit better. Okay? And if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about how you got started in acting. Um, how I got started in acting is quite simple. It's pretty much the man sitting next to me. Um, he directed me in a few plays, and actually I was an extra, if you want to call it, in, in a play where I was a French drunk prostitute. And, um, I kind of, he told me to ad-lib it, just do what comes natural, so what came natural to me was Lucille Ball, drunken Vita Vita Vegemin, and I started talking to polls and stuff, and he loved it, and he said that I should really pursue it, and I thought about it, and I did, and I, I fell in love with the art of acting. I really, truly love it. That is awesome. What about you, Lee? Well, i got to say, Anna, I always call her a jazz actress because you do not know what she's going to do, and I love that. She's great. Uh, I decided when I was seven that I wanted to be an actor. So all the kids were talking about, what are you going to do when you grow up? Well, I took that seriously. I didn't want to be a fireman, I loved a policeman, but I didn't want to be a policeman. And so I said, you know, you could be on TV. You could do that. Yeah. So at seven, I decided. So I just kept working on it. Not year after year, but <laughs> most of the time, I gotta say. You know, when you're seven, like all the, it was all girls in, in the little drama group. And I didn't want to hang out with the girls. That was like so uncool when you're a seven year old boy. So, you know, it took me a little while, but then my thing started firing when I got to school. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So, what are some of the things that you've done so far? Uh, I've done a lot of community plays. Um, I've done public service announcements for driving and texting. I have been an extra on Iron Man 3. Got to see the man, Morton Downey. Um, if I remember correctly, you actually physically ran into him? Once or twice. It was an accident. <laughs> they still can't prove it. Um, <laughs> I've done several student films with Mr. Armstrong as well, and uh, I am in a TV pilot uh, being shot here in Wilmington called Realm, which I'm very, very excited about. Oh, that's awesome. What about you, Lee? Uh, well, it's almost dangerous to ask an actor to talk about themselves because, you know, <laughs> we, we, we do that. Um, but uh, I've done 94 films so far, and so I'm decided I want to go to 100. I don't know what will <laughs> happen after 100, probably keep going as much as I can, but, you know, Definitely working on it. Not all the big films, uh, you know, some of them are never got out of the can. 
I shot them, they count, mm -hmm. and uh, student films, uh, ultra low budgets, modified low budgets, low budgets, big films. So, um, some of my favorites. Absolutely. Uh, this one was a really good one that I worked on, The Three Stooges, and I got to work for two weeks in Atlanta with the Fairley Brothers. It was a nice opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved Sean Hayes. He was just tremendous to work with. I got cast in a recurring role on Eastbound and Down, the last season of that, mm -hmm. and Danny McBride is absolutely nuts, and I got to work with uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, and so, you know, um, I was not a major character, but I was there in, I think, four of the episodes as it finally shot down. This one was called Escape from Tomorrow, and this got famous because um, it, we shot it guerrilla style in Disney Studios, oh, wow. and so it had a lot of press on it. And uh, was at Sundance Film Festival, um, and uh, you know it's an odd film, I've got to say, <laughs> uh, but I like that a lot. Um, I'll show you this one. Um, this was my very first film that I shot uh, in Los Angeles with uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Jim Belushi. So this is in the '80s. I'm a younger <laughs> look there, okay, but um, it was uh, it was definitely a nice experience and. You know, I find that sometimes the bigger the names, the nicer the folks. And it's not always the case, but usually they're secure. So that's great. Well, that's fantastic. All right. So, Anna, what would you say is probably one of the best roles that you've ever had so far? The best role so far I've had was actually on a reenactment show. Um, it's a show that um, it did reenactments of people who had different tragedies, and I played the aunt of a little girl that was killed by a pedophile. And uh, she was in, in the scene that I was in, which actually was cut, which killed me, but it's the nature of the business. I was sitting in the interrogation room across from the, the actor who portrayed the person who killed my niece. And my, my role was to beg him to please tell me, because at that juncture she didn't know if the child was still alive or not. And the man had killed the baby and was trying to extort money from her. And when I first walked in, I was, you know, very happy, and the director saw me, and I said, you know, I'm so happy to be here, and this is great, and blah, blah, blah. And he just kind of looked at me, he said, you do know what you're here for, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a reenactment of this lady, blah, blah, blah. And he just kind of looked at me, he's like, come here for a minute. And he put me in a room and he showed me the actual wanted posters of when this child was missing. And he said, are you a parent? And I said, yes, I am. And, and then we went into the, um, the scene and I sat down across from the actor. And he said, when you look at this man, he said, this man killed your child. Not killed your child, tortured him, destroyed him, and has no remorse. And he was, he was kneeling, I'll never forget, he was kneeling down next to me and I just looked at the actor and he said, the woman who lived what you're about to portray is going to be watching you that night. Give her the respect that her family needs. And that's honestly the last thing I remember him saying because I, I remember him kind of fading away and I remember I looked up at the actor and I went into my lines but I wasn't acting. I remember I, I, I remember actually doing this. I was sitting on my hands and I started rocking and I didn't mean to. And it was so I wouldn't jump across the table and kill him. Like the rage that just came up in me and tears started welling in my eyes. And I do remember him saying action really low. And he brought that out in me. And at the end of it, I had to walk off set and because my hands were literally shaking and I didn't know what happened to me. And it was a moment where in acting, when you become so one with that role, you're not acting anymore. It's just something organic. It comes out of you. It just was very, very, um, it was new to me. And I was like, I, I want to do this. I can do this. So. Wow. Also, awesome. the actor across the table, he was like, you were scaring the heck out of me. Because <laughs> you do know I'm doing a role. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. He's like, you looked at me like you wanted to rip my head off. I'm like, I did. I really, really did. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was the most organic time for me and would love to play a role like that again. That is awesome. What about you, Lee? Uh, well, could you say the question again? As far as what's been your favorite role and how did you prepare for it? Oh, yeah, uh, I can't answer that. Uh, because, I, you know, it's like what, which one of your kids is your favorite kid? I mean, right. you know, I, it just, I don't, my brain doesn't work that way. 
I, I can tell you, um, I was not the actor that was across the table from Anna, <laughs> um, although we had worked together. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I think that we, we were both in a small film uh, that was called Puddle Jumper. Now, I, you, you've got to understand, I mean, I was in Los Angeles for the 80s, like 79 to 91, okay? So I would work a few times a year and stuff, but then I came here uh, into the southeast and uh, Puddle Jumper uh, was my first lead. Uh, so I'd never had a film lead, and I'm a character actor, so you know, mm -hmm. it's not unusual for me to show up and I have a line or I have, you know, five lines or a page or something like that. That's kind of like comes with the territory. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, but Puddle Jumper was the first film where I found that I could carry a film if I was asked to do so. And that is a big confidence builder for an actor. And so once you realize that, then, you know, the under fives or whatever, then that's just kind of like playtime. And yeah. so you have fun with it. But I remember that film a lot. Uh, and I, you know, the thing I think that's really nice about being an unknown actor, uh, I mean, not a name actor, I'm not totally unknown, but a, a name, not a name actor, is that people tend to see you, or directors tend to see you as to who they want you to be. Mm -hmm. So when you have a name, I mean, like if we look at Liam Neeson, now, you know, Every movie he is making now is kind of like a family in trouble and somebody's abducted or, you know, and he's, and, and yeah, he is making lots of money. I, you know, I'm not begrudging him that. But, you know, it's kind of, there's this, there's like, okay, well, we've got this kind of movie. Oh, yeah, let's get Liam Neeson. Okay. So with, uh, you know, not being known, they don't do that with us. And so, man, I have had all sorts of crazy psycho roles, which I'm a nice guy, really, I am, <laughs> but, really uh, you know, I mean, I've chained women up in my basement, and, you know, and <laughs> I, that's just kind of a day's work, and uh, so, you know, it's not, not who I am, but that is, those are the roles, and sometimes you just have to move into very dark places, uh, but I think I like the comedies the best, um, and so I have a really good time with those. And I like working with really good directors. So um, uh, there's a director here in North Carolina, Michael Babbitt, who is really good. And I really liked him. And uh, then I also did a film uh, here in North Carolina called Dead End Job uh, with the director, William Lilly. Uh, and um, I, I got to play the Angel of Mercy, who kind of like had a New York accent. You know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. that was a whole lot of fun. So. Um, you know, and those are some of the, the ones that come to my mind, but, um, uh, yeah. I've got just a little bit more, and you guys are going to have the opportunity to see their demo reels. It's some fantastic stuff. But anyway, Anna, what, one, where do you want to see yourself going? And then two, how would you, for somebody new to the business, how would you want them, what pieces of advice would you give to them? My goal is not to just have one, but a couple of really good roles. And what I mean by that is I once told somebody that I want a role that has chops, cojones. And for me, one of my favorite actresses is Angelina Jolie. And not because she does all these action films where you know she kicks butt and everything, which is great, what I would love to do. And not because she's gorgeous and just naturally beautiful and all that. When I saw The Changeling, that spoke to me. The one where it wasn't about her so much. And it was, I mean, the, the movie was about her, but it was about her interaction with her child. And you know, the child wasn't hers. And, and the best part in that film for me was when she was in the psych ward and the doctors doing everything to her to get her to admit that that was her child and I won't say it on camera but she tells him what he can do with his horse and and just the the look in her eyes the defiance in her eyes I was just like yes that's what I want to do and even my one of my favorite male actors is um, Shawshank Redemption Tim Robbins the best scene for me in that film is again where he's in the the office and he's playing the record and they're knocking on the door to shut it off and you see him lean in like he's about to shut it off and he just looks up and the defiance in his eyes to me with acting is right here if not so much what comes out of the mouth but if you can say so many words 
in just one snippet with your eyes. I mean, that part right there, I was just like, oh my God, yes! And then that's what I mean by Gohonis, a role that it may not necessarily make you look in the best light, or Charlize Theron in Monster. I mean, she looked unrecognizable, but she owned it, and it was dark, and it was dirty, and it was one of those films that you just go, whoa. That's what I want. At the end of a film, I want someone to go, she had cojones. I don't know. I don't want that on my my, uh, my death stone or anything, but still, she had cojones. She did it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to have. That's awesome. Um, in regards to someone up and coming, you said tips. Um, right. Don't take yourself so seriously. By that, I mean it's so easy in this industry to get caught up in the hype and, and even you know at the level that we're at now sometimes people kind of you know I've gotten a few extra roles oh you know you don't have my coffee here on set it's like this is a business you have to treat it as a business you are your business you have you have to promote it you have to be cognizant of the um, profile you put out on the internet but also at the same time it's an art okay so you have to put in the time of training, you have to take it seriously, you have to have respect for other actors, and we're all in it for our own different reasons. Some people want to be famous and that's absolutely fine, but when the ego starts coming out, it's like, oh, I have four more credits than you. It's like, sweetheart, you are not, again, Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt. At whatever level you're at, respect that and respect whatever somebody else is at and just keep going, no matter how old you are, no matter, you know, life is going to maybe stop you, whether it's children, work, whatever. The minute you can, get back into it, if that's your passion, and just keep going. Oh, and join my fan page. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> what about you? Okay, so, now what is it you're asking me again? <laughs> See, this is what happens when you get a little bit older. I'm, it's I'm from New like, York, I'm okay, sorry. What was that question? <laughs> the, I guess the first one would be is, what kind of role would be your perfect role? And then the second. One that pays. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as, as, so as far as the whole. I mean, this is what my goal is. Okay. Okay, I would like to get like a role on a series. Okay, I told this to my agent, and she said, yeah, everybody wants that. I, she laughed at me. So anyway, but I, I would like to find a role on a series where it's kind of like, I want to go out like Grandpa Walton, you know, where it's kind of like the old sage, grandfather, a, 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 a cleric, uh, somebody that's got the kind of little bit of wisdom that helps the young kids along, you know. Gotcha. That's kind of like, I, I'd love to do that. And then anything with magic would be fun. You know, I would like that. So that's that, and then the I do remember the second part, which is uh, people coming along. Um, I guess there's several things I would tell them. First of all, study. Uh, I know that there are actors that say, "Hey, I want to be an actor. Let me go get an agent." <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, I mean, I have a bachelor's and a master's in theater. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles. I've studied numerous workshops with different teachers. I continue to study with different teachers here in the Southeast. Uh, and so education is never done. And um, you can't just show up. Uh, there's not one way of working. You, you know, uh, the example I frequently use is like if you're a carpenter and you just show up with a wrench, there's only going to be a few jobs that you can do. So, you know, you want a wide range of tools to help you to do different kinds of tasks. So study is really important. Uh, I think that um, the dynamics are a little bit different in the Southeast than they were in Los Angeles. And then from my friends that are working in New York uh, would tell me, um, you know, I like to do a lot of work. I feel like I don't get better by sitting at home. Mm -hmm. So when people ask me if I would do a role, I don't go, oh, no, 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 that's beneath me. I'm so sorry. You know, <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, I like, I don't mind doing student films, okay? And student films is a good way to begin. Mm -hmm. Find where the, the schools are that are out there. Find those websites that are posting student films. It can get you footage. It can get you real, help, uh, real material and um, some credits to give you credibility when you do walk into the agent's office. 
Um, and I really think it's that we give back to the profession by working with the up and coming directors. And then, when it's time to move into the professional category, understand what you're doing when you become a member of SAG-AFTRA. That's Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio, Artists, which is where the professional actors belong. Okay, mm -hmm. And so it's a big step because then suddenly everybody who was willing to hire you when they weren't paying anything can't hire you. Okay, they have to sign a signatory agreement and there are rates uh, that are graded scales, okay, uh, that they have to, to follow. And so, I, you know, that's a big step, but I think it's ultimately for a professional is where you need to go. Uh, and I can say that another goal of mine is to be in a movie with Anna Nalepka. I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are there you awesome. Go, bud. <laughs> guys, I hope you learned a lot today. And you will have the opportunity, if you keep on watching, to see their actor reels, their demo reels, so that you can see them in action. Also, if you go to IndieSpotlightNetwork.com, that we're going to have a way that you can connect to these guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. It's the 5 0. It's the 5 0. Scram! You again! Okay. You smell like a horse's ass. I don't want to smell you. It's a professional environment. I'll talk to her. Please talk to her. I will. A tisket, a tasket. I brought you a gift basket. KP, <laughs> think about rabbits. Well, I mean, like if there are too many rabbits in the garden, they eat up all the food, and then they starve when it's all gone. Ah! Humans are like that. Good job, Ken. Let's go get number two before lunch. Did you hear me? Hello? Just great, Craig. You pissed the guy off. Hello? Hello? Woo! Ah! I wonder if he's tall. I bet he's tall. <laughs> you think you gotta kill him? And what is the most common type of dog that needs to be put down? Pit bulls. <laughs> and can you tell the court why that is? Objection, Your Honor! <laughs> can't testify. Shut up, Mom! I can't. Tommy, think about this, okay? Uh, uh, tell me, th this ain't good. This ain't no good. I, 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 I hope you I know what you're doing. It. Let's see what you're made of. Go on. Pick it up. No. The least you can do is die honorably like your pa. Well done. Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas, Harry. Thank you. You're a good kid, Austin. You're a good kid. Let's begin with your marriage. What do you think the problem is with your marriage? Hmm. I'll go first, if yeah. that's okay. <laughs> I was... Well, he's not the cleanest person. I'm clean. In fact, he's a slob. I am not a as slob. As you can see. No, this is a style. 
It's an embarrassment to me and my friends. I tried to like encourage him to talk to my friends and, 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 and to have an intelligent conversation. He's staring the whole time at their tits, the whole time. Johnny! Hola, Johnny! Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about the good old days. Okay, well, Beth and Patty are going to be here in a few minutes, and this is your place. You need to be the one to show them the ropes. Come on, Anna. You're the... run the bakery. They're your friends. Please. All right. But if there ever comes a time when the hammer has to come down, that is all you, my friend. I am not being the bad guy. Contessa. Yes, sir. Have you ever been in love? Excuse me? I mean, have you ever loved someone and, and couldn't tell them? Are you, um, trying to tell me something, sir? Oh, no, no. <laughs> not you. I, I was referring to someone else many years ago. Who? What happened? Oh, forget it. Never mind. I forget I said anything. Are you sure? Um, to answer your question, I did love somebody once, and I couldn't tell him. In fact, I kept it a secret. Our whole relationship was a secret. What, was he married? <laughs> Funny thing about secrets. You spend your whole life making sure nobody finds out. Because if they do, you know it'll destroy you. Then years go by, and you come to realize it already has destroyed you. Sleep well, Mr. Singh.